Hello everybody and a very warm welcome. It's not warm, it's minus five. Look, there's tons of snow around and all that kind of thing. There's a blizzard blowing. It's real brass monkeys weather. And what better excuse than to do a review of a brass library. Eight Dio's Century Brass is what we're going to be looking at. We're going to be doing a review of it. Then we're going to be putting it into action, scoring a sequence just like this. So, first the review, then the scoring. Let's go inside in the warm and get cracking. <sighs> oh, that's a bit better. Right, let me strip down and we'll get into action. <sighs> okay, 8 Dio Century Brass Bundle. Um, it's a $600 bundle which covers everything from 12 horns down to a single horn. It's got horns, trumpets, trombones. Um, bass trombone, um, it's got some solo instruments like chimbasso and tuba and all kinds of things. So it's a, and it's got an enormous range of articulations. Its ambition is to be able to do everything from the most soft and subtle uh, to the most full-on sort of fanfare trailer stuff. We shall see, shan't we? What I'm going to do in this uh, video is firstly look at the library and then secondly, in the second half, um, I'm going to be doing some scoring. So whichever part of that rings your bell, why don't you come along for the ride? First of all, obviously, what everybody wants to know is what does it sound like? OK, here we have, it's a, a loaded up in contact. It needs the full version of contact. Um, it doesn't work through native access, so you just load it up. Um, there's no sort of authorization, um, uh, but each library is watermarked. So this is, I've got six horns uh, loaded, and this is the legato patch. It's very nice. Let's, I'll show you how the, I'll, I'll, walk, I'll talk all, to you through how all this um, um, stuff works in a minute. What else should we have next? Oh, let's just go to straight sustains and then do some. It's very good. Okay, so one of the things which impresses me immediately is this. On the mod wheel, going from pianissimo to fortissimo, listen very carefully. You don't hear any phasing. Um, older libraries, because of what they're doing is they're cross-fading between a whole load of different dynamic layers, Brass is famous. If you try and layer one little brass on top of the other, it goes it, it sounds really horrible. So in the past, what you would have heard is very clear segments as it goes from pianissimo to fortissimo. But but that you don't hear. So that's really really good. Um, there's they're very proud of their shorts, so let's have a little listen. Nice. That's Staccatissimo, six horns. I mean, what... I'll, Let's give you a couple more um, bits and pieces. Um, uh, this is a bit of a highlight, frankly. The amount, we'll talk about this, but the, the amount of muted stuff there is in this. Okay, so this is the ensemble. Look at this, you get 12, six and two, and plus the solo um, brass, which is obviously one. 
You know that. Okay. The reason this is, is, is really important, as I mentioned before, you, can, you can't layer brass. You can't take two brass and play two you know, and layer one on top of the other and expect it to sound for like four. It sounds horrible. It all goes, because of the nature of the brass instrument, there's something about it where it could just, if you try and layer stuff or multi-track it, it goes all phasey and ghastly. So if you want the sound of six horns, uh, you need a six-horn harp sample. So the reason you've got 12 horns, for example, um, is if you want that really big trailery sound, let's just load up 12 horns. Come on, you can do it. Where are you going? There we go. Oh. Yes, replace. Um, you need 12 horns. You can't play tw um, six horns twice. So if we get the legato going. <laughs> you know, sounds great. Absolutely lovely. Um, you get slightly sh um, fewer articulation because you're, in reality, you're not going to be using 12 horns all the time. You're going to be using it where you want a really big, strong top line. Um, you're not going to be using it for chords because if you play, for example, that, what you're actually listening to there is three notes of 12 horns, so you got, you're listening to 36 horns. If realism bothers you, then that should bother you. So what most people do <coughs> is they would use, for example, two horns for um, their um, for their chords, because then you've got two horns on each note, which is entirely realistic. That's what most people with a live orchestra would do. So. It's really easy to spend, frankly, too much time in the upper register. Most of the quiet stuff. Spitfire, in the old days, would go up to about there. Now it goes all the way. So at least the top half of this is very bright. It is a bright sound. Overall, Okay, I'm doing lots of wiggling about with the mod wheel, but one of the things which 8DO has gone to an enormous amount of trouble to do, always from the beginning, is this thing, arcs. Uh, natural swells played by the players. <laughs> I've got no reverb on this at all. This is just as it comes out of the box. Um, they've got this other thing called soaring, which is similar. <laughs> Except it does it all by itself. There's no dynamics on this. It's just... Or are there? Yes, there are. Does the speed make any difference? Yes, it does. So you've got speed, which it defaults to CC18. So you can, you can choose whether that's long or short. That's good. I didn't notice that before. Let's see if it works with the arcs. OK. Let's turn it right up. Yeah. Aha, okay, that's cool. Right, so you can decide how long it is. That's very nice. So it makes it much, much easier to control. Um, 
so let's have a little look. So you've got six, you've got 12, 2, and 6. They all sound really nice. Uh, let's have a look at the... Um, this is the kind of range of articulations you've got. Staccatissimo, fanfare shorts, uh, staccato, macato, soaring shorts, sorry, rips, long, blah, blah, blah. and look at all this for muted. Uh, staccatissimo, macato, macato, shorts, soaring. You, uh, I mean, for this alone, I've never seen so many articulations on um, a brass library for muted. I mean, that's insane. No wonder they were in there for a month doing it. I mean, it's really good. Um, because I love um, muted brass. Let's try the trombones. But, uh, I'll talk about this. Uh, I'm just sort of going through. Perfectly nice. Soaring long. Let's do soaring long. The real test with brass is how good it is quietly. How good it is quietly. Not bad. OK, let's now look at something else. Suppose you wanted a different mix. You've got the microphone positions down here. So we've got wide. We've got the Decca tree. These are the, it's an equilateral uh, triangle of microphones, normally just above and behind the conductor. So you get sef left, center, right when it's mixed up. Yeah, let's turn up a bit. Decca tree is normally the sort of default orchestral sound. Close. Another thing to notice, it's coming straight down the middle. Everything is pan centre, so you can decide where to stick them yourself. So you don't have to put up with, you know, your brass players being sort of right, left and centre in traditional classical arrangement. If you don't want it, you can stick them wherever you like. Okay, so if we balance that up, so if we take, if we want a softer sound, for example, take the close right down. may also notice there's some reverb here. Let's see what that it's not bad. Take that down. That's not bad at all. getting carried away. Uh, very nice, very nice indeed. Okay, boys, let's see what you make of the muted trombones. But look, look at all this. Staccatissimo. Um, you got uh, triple tonguing and double tonguing. Absolutely essential. Because that is not the sound of somebody going bidlum, it's bidlum. And you've got triples and you've got um, double tonguing, so you've got four. When you've got this sample, you'll use it 
all the time. You go, badala, 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 you know, type thing. But mainly you go, badala, dun, 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 etc. Um, trumpets. And I haven't even got onto the solos yet. Um, you could spend a long time going through all this. And we are! <laughs> Oh, sorry. Look, I mean, there's a lot to talk about. What is the sound of the hall? Because the, the sound of any orchestral library is the sound... It's, it's interesting, it's sort of... Let's go for the shortest and... It's new, it, I'd say it's almost neutral. It, if you listen to the Spitfire stuff, which is all very ambient and recorded at Lindhurst, it sounds not surprising, exactly like Lindhurst does. It's... Uh, you know, soft ambient sound. You can make it sound really ballsy and great and really tough. I mean, all the, you know, Dark Knight stuff was recorded there. But it does have this kind of amazing soft, gentle ambience. I mean, if you want to do that. Then there's the short, splashy Michael Giacchino sort of sound, which you get out of Sony, Warner Brothers, uh, studios like that. This is sort of a bit of both in a funny kind of way. It doesn't sound... It doesn't sound like um, a, um, a scoring stage exactly. But it doesn't sound like a hall either. It's, it's a perfectly decent sound because you can, work, you can work it any way you like. You can um, turn it into a, you know, you could probably blend this in with most libraries. It is definitely on the brighter side. Um, and I think you might struggle if your main library is Spitfire, for example. Either you're going to be playing quite a lot of stuff very, very gently and probably mixing stuff um, using mic positions, which will considerably increase the memory footprint. But it's, listen, it's a very nice sound. Let's have triple tangy. Really good. And that's, it's, I quite, I like the fact that it cuts off quite sharply because normally what you're doing is ba ba and then so you go da and then a different articulation will kick in for the da, okay? Um, but... Shall we have a quick look? I mean, I don't want to labour the point too long, um, but uh, let's have a look at... Uh, OK, solo French horn. Uh, come on in. Very nice. That's really nice. And that's no reverb, nothing. I think that sounds great. Um, what else are you going to listen to? How about the solo trumpet? I can't go through everything, but um, we're going to do a bit of scoring in a minute. I just do want to talk about the... A lot of principles would go to there. It goes to top C sharp, which is an entirely reasonable top. You don't, you know, if you wrote a D, you would have to know your players pretty well, but 
most would be able to do that, I think. Um, I mean, most top-line professional um, session players would be able to do that. But, but the, the range here is entirely realistic, and uh, you, you really can't complain. Um, um, look, again, oh, you've got uh, arc, vib. I can't, okay, I just... Absolutely lovely. Right, let's talk about the interface, um, which is really different to everybody else's. Um, let's go back to, what should we go to? What should we use? Okay, let's use six horns. Why not? That's nice and straightforward. Meet and two veg. Um, the way it works is you get these slots, okay? When you double click on it, you can choose what instrument goes in that slot. You can only use each instrument once. Okay, so if we're going to have, for example, we decide our default one is going to be legato, then we double click on this one, and the next one we use is staccato. Maybe we want this, you know, sustain. You could, ha you could have them all in one, or you could load up two, for example, and have one for shorts and one for longs. Or, if you really wanted to, uh, and a lot of people do, and this is actually a slight weakness of the system, is that you could have one articulation per MIDI channel, which is a very common way of setting up your um, template. Um, and it's not so easy to do with this. It's because you'd have to load each one. And there isn't any great folder filled with articulations. So you'd have to load each one, choose the articulation, load another one, choose the articulation. So there's sort of a little bit more work to do. In terms of swapping, OK, let's just put some of these in. Uh, what else are we going to have? Um, let's have one of these arcs, long arc, yeah. And what else we got? Flutter tongue, maybe that. OK. So look, you can either in terms of changing articulation, you've got um, key switches, which you can control. Um, you can swap around. Or you've got this. You can, you can use CC. Um, these are controllers, so you can set it to any one you like. So I've set some buttons up on 20, 21, 22, 23. Obviously, whichever system you choose, you've got to stick to it. Um, but therefore, look, I've got the buttons in front of me, 20. Oh. <gasps> Sorry, John. So if you're a fan of having all your articulations on one line, this works extremely well. And you can program buttons like this. Um, so some of the labels fall off like that. Look, it's my labels falling off. Number 30. Useless. OK. And, or you can use um, control, uh, control keys. If you use CC, you could easily program that using um, touchscreen. Um, so that you could just swap around. Um, there is no great folder of um, uh, multis, effectively. So there is no sort of default template you can just load in with all the articulations. Um, so although this system gives you a great deal of flexibility, not least because, unlike most um, multi uh, key switch things, you can't here, look you can actually mix. This is a big criticism of a lot of others, because sometimes the staccatos will really stand out, and then you'll go to the... These balance fine, actually, but, but normally, if there's a key switch and the different articulations are not perfectly balanced, you're constantly trying to adjust for the fact that the staccatos are too long. With this, you can actually set it up the way you want. Okay. So it is very customizable, but very customizable comes at the cost of being quite labor intensive. Given the number of articulations, if you wanted to load, if you wanted to make this your big thing and you wanted a really big setup, it's going to take you quite a while to do. Because um, you've got to decide 
if you're not going to go with the key switches, you, you, yeah, would you, and why wouldn't you? You know, but you have to devise your own system because you can't. Um, you you know, traditionally, you've got to work out. You really want each instrument to have legato on the same key switch, otherwise you go bonkers, wouldn't you? I mean, more bonkers. Um, so there are downsides to this, but I think once you get your head around it, it will be really, really good and strong. Okay, so look, the what do I think of this? Um, the sound is quite bright. It it lends itself very much to trailer world and games world and hybrid scoring and things like that. It does have um, a soft side, and um, it does soft well. Uh, it's not as good in the lower registers, I mean, as the, and the pianissimo as, for example, Spitfire is, um, but it's much, it's certainly as strong, if not stronger, in um, the upper um, echelons, the sort of double 40 and above. In terms of the range of articulations, it's really good. And I'm a huge fan of 8DO's arcs and things like that. I think they're really, really special. And a lot of those sounds in the muted section, I've never seen um, sampled before. Um, so, or certainly not in a recent library. Um, so if you were, if you already own one of the big libraries, there's a lot of good reasons to buy this one as well, just for the articulations which are on here, which you won't find anywhere else, like the dynamic arc, the arcs and the muted things and things like that. If you're still on a slightly older library and you're looking for something which is easier to use and sounds better, um, this should be a serious consideration. It's really down to whether you like the brighter sound of this compared to um, Spitfire or Berlin, which is also s s slightly warmer and rounder. If you're, going to be cr if you're going to be critical, some sounds are a little bit bright and harsh, um, and it's definitely skewed towards the... It's the strongest suit is the uh, higher dynamics. But look, it's a really good library. It's a really, really good library, and I'm playing all this with no... It's got the built-in uh, you know, reverb, and it's got all... Uh, I didn't mention all the, there's tons and a half of effects if you want to do weird and wonderful things to it. But um, if you were going to set this up as a, in a little template, it would take a while. But um, I think you would find in the course of time that this is a very strong library when it comes to uh, blending in with uh, other, certainly hybrid trailer um, big full-on action, stuff like that, it would do this really, really well. So that's the sort of review bit. What I want to do next is to use it in action to um, look at a little bit of sort of very short piece of heroic scoring, and we'll see how we get on. So stay tuned. <laughs>